Welcome to HelpYourMath.com. In today's video, we'll be covering contingency tables. And for the contingency table, we'll be covering a few topics like conditional probabilities, the addition rule for probabilities, the complement rule for probabilities, and also the AND rule for probabilities, which is a multiplicative rule. But in this case, because they're not independent events, we're going to have things that are not mutually exclusive. So we're going to deal with a dependent rule for a multiplication rule. Now, in the first of the three problem sets we have here is A, find the probability that the person selected does not own two credit cards. B, the second question will be find the probability that someone selected owns one credit card or is employed. And C, find the probability that the person selected owns exactly two credit cards given that the person is unemployed. Now, for our information base, we have here two values. We have the values of people who own credit cards and their employment status. And now these things are not mutually exclusive, meaning they overlap from time to time. And so we have the, the results of people having either one credit card or two, and the results of people being employed or unemployed. And for the people employed, we have 46 for the people with one, and 63 for the people with two. For the unemployed, we have 16 for the people with one credit card and 25 for the people with two. And we can read this back and forth in both ways. But before we begin this problem, what we want to do is get the totals of all the people and for each category. So the total number of employed people, the total number of the unemployed people, the total number of people with two credit cards, and the total of people with one credit card. And since this is a population, we'll find out what the grand total of people are. And if this is correct, the totals we have sum into the right should be equivalent to the so totals we have sum in to the bottom here. And once we see, they should both add up to the number we get in the bottom right corner, which is our total population. So let's begin with those. I'll be putting those sums in red so we can identify with them differently from everything else that's written up here. Also, besides that, we have the set of employed people as the set of E, the unemployed people as the set of U, the people with one credit card is the set of O, and the people with two credit cards is the set of T. So here we have 46 plus 16, that's going to give us 62. 63 plus 25, that's going to give us 88. And so here if we go over to the right side now for the employed and unemployed folks, the employed folks are 46 plus 63, that's going to be 109. And for the unemployed folks, it's going to be 16 plus 25, and I believe that gives us 41. Now, 109 plus 41 is 150. 62 plus 88 is also 150. So our grand total of people here is 150. So now we can begin the problems. Now let's start with the first one. And I'll not only solve this, but I'll also rewrite this question for the people who are taking higher levels of statistics so they can see how these equations are actually formed through set notation. Find the probability that the person selected does not own two credit cards. Now this is a complementary event. We're seeing the probability that the people are not of the people who have two credit cards. So to set this up, we know the, the set of the people with two credit cards are the set of T. So I'll set that up here, and for A we have the probability that the person does not own two credit cards. So we could do T not with an indicating line above it, or we can have an apostrophe outside of it. I'm going to go with the line above it to show the not, and this is a complementary rule. And to get any complementary event, all we want to do is take the event we have, which I'll just notarize as A, and it's going to be 1 minus the probability of that event. So for this event here, we have to find the probability of someone owning two credit cards. And for the probability of someone owning two credit cards, we're going to take that and subtract it from one. So here we're going to have, uh, for, let's first detail the probability that someone owns two credit cards. And that's going to be 88 for the total population of people with two credit cards over 150. And now as far as the 1 goes, when we're setting this up, since the total population is 150, we're going to subtract 150 minus 150. I mean 150 over 150 minus the 88 over 150 to get the total number of people that do not have two credit cards. 
this difference from 150 to 188 to 88 is going to give us that's going to give us 62 and we could see that just by checking how many people have one credit card here and that's going to be 62 out of 150 which when reduced by 2 62 divided by 2 is 31 and 150 divided by 2 is 75 now this here would be your final answer for the first problem here 31 over 75 but in the case you guys are in a class and your professor requires decimals and rounded amounts, you could just divide 31 by 75 and produce that decimal number and round up to the specified number of decimal places, all right? Let's go take a look at problem B now. So here, since we're done with one, I can get rid of that. Let's move on to problem number two. So I'll leave the solution for A right up here in the right-hand corner. So problem B here says... Find the probability that someone selected owns one credit card or is employed. Now this is the addition rule for uh, events that are not mutually exclusive, right? So here we have an event with or, in the case of A or B, is equivalent to the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of A and B when they occur at the same time. Now, for the case of each one unique event, we'll just take the event of one or the other, and where we're subtracting this piece right here, this is also known as the intersecting set. And the intersecting set is where the two actually intersect with each other. We'll see right now how that works. So for problem B here, we have the event that someone owns one credit card or is employed. So we're looking specifically at the probability that somebody owns one credit card, which is the set of O, or, which is union, um, they are, or they are employed. And employed is the set of E, so we're just going to put O-U-E here. So it's the probability of O union E, and this could also be written as A union B. And this is just for those taking higher forms of statistics. So this is also for the word or. So here we're going to have the probability of O plus the probability of E minus the probability of O intersect an E. All right? And this is the sign for and, right? And so let's get these calculations. So let me write these calculations in a different color directly above them. The probability that somebody owns one credit card, 62 out of 150. The probability that somebody is employed is, we check the employment line, it's 109 over 150. And we're subtracting the intersection of these two. Now, if I'm looking at people that are employed, which is this line, right? And then the people that own one credit card, which is this line, I see that this and this intersect right here at 46. So I'm taking the 46 and I'm putting that over the total here, which gives me 46 out of 150. And now I just have to do calculations to see what, what the sum is. And when I do 62 plus 109 minus 46, right? So that's 62 plus 109 is 171 minus 46 is going to give me 125. And that 125 is going to be divided by 150. And now for the result of my problem, I just have to reduce the fractions. They have a common factor of 25. So this is 525s, this is 625s on the bottom. And that would be my solution for B, 5 over 6. So the probability that the person has one credit card or is employed would be just 5 over 6. And again, remember, if you have to get a decimal for this value, make sure you divide the 5 with the 6 and round it to the number of specified decimal places. Now going for the last problem we have here is part C, which is probably the easiest of these and probably the shortest to figure out. And the routine work for it is very simple. And so I'll be using my eraser to demonstrate exactly how to do this correctly because there's not much work that goes into it. So now we're finding the probability that someone selected at random owns exactly two credit cards given, and I stress the word given, that the person is unemployed. Now when you're given specific information, you have to keep this in mind. 
that is all you are given for the data. So if it says here we're given only that the person is unemployed, we can totally just disregard the people that are unemployed and the totals that they produce. But what we won't disregard is the number of credit cards they own. And so this is all the information we're given and we want to find the probability that that the person selected owns exactly two credit cards. So we look at the total number of people in our population is 41, right? And then we're looking at the total number of people with two credit cards out of this population. And that's only 25. So the probability and the conditional rule when you're writing this, for the person who owns two credit cards given, or let's write this in jargon, two credit cards given that they are unemployed. This actually translates to the form of P of T with the line going straight down, given that they're unemployed. And again, if they own two credit cards, right here we see the 25, and that's 25 people out of the grand total of people of the given set of information. And we're only given that the person is unemployed. And the total for that population 41. Now remember, just divide this number with the 41, the 25 divided by 41 on your calculator, and round it to the specified number of decimal places. All right?